It is that time of the year again where we all freak out about the HSC and no, that's not right. It's that time of the year where we organize all of our things, highlight all the important parts and then forget to study. No, 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 no. We are going to do many examples, practice a bunch of questions and we're going to be totally ready for the HSC. That's the one. Today, I'm going to go over the 2002 Mathematics Standards 2 HSC paper, and I'm going to try and do it as quickly as I can. Ready? Let's go. Question number one, which graph represents a negatively skewed distribution? This one has got to be C. It's skewed to the right more, and that's negatively distributed. Let me see. Let's check our answers. One is C. Very good. Let's go to the next one. Question number two, which of the following could be the graph of y equals minus 2x plus 2? Well, minus 2x is the gradient, which means it's got to go this way. That means c and d are out. And then plus 2 means it goes up by 2, which is going to be a. 2a, let's have a check. 2a, that's correct. Number three, the network diagram shows the time needed for each step in order to complete a project. What is the critical path to complete the project? The critical path basically means how much time do you have to allocate to complete this project? Uh, the, the shortest amount of time you can allocate. Let's have a look here. The path ACI would be 18 units of time. Oh, let's just call it hours. ADG, ADG would be 1922, BEH would be 21117, and then BEFG 2111315. That means that we need at least 22 hours right to complete this project because the longest process takes 22 hours that means a d g is the critical path if anything goes wrong in that path it's going to take longer to complete this thing let's have a look if i'm right 3b 3b there you go four lily wanted to estimate the number of fish in a lake she randomly captures 30 fish, then tagged and released them. One week later, she randomly captured 40 fish, and she found that 20 of those 40 is tagged. What's the estimate number of fish? She captured 30 fish. There you go, that's my rendition of a fish. Out of who knows how many, and they were tagged. But then when she captured uh, 40 of them later, 12 of them were tagged. Therefore however many, so that will be 120 equals 12x, therefore x is equal to, uh, oops, something went wrong here, there we go, 1200, yes, 1200 equals 12x, so that means x is 100, it's 4d, oh, there's too many things in the way, 4d, correct, 5, consider the following data set, which row of the table shows how the median and mean are affected when a score of 5 is added to the database? So let's edit in 5. Are they in order? Yes, they're all in order. Uh, the median is the middle. So what was the median before? Hang on, let me get rid of that 5. And I'm going to use black for now. The median is here, which is still 17. That's the median. The mean, the average is, of course, going to change, right? So it's not going to be B or C. And if we add the 5 in, then the median is going to be this 17. That means it stays the same. Therefore, 5 is D. Let's check. 5 is D. Good. 6. What is 20 minutes to one third of a day expressed as a ratio? 20 minutes to one third of a day. 
a third of a day is how many what how many hours is that 24 divided by 3 8 hours this is minutes 8 hours is how many minutes 80 times 60 480 and so that divided by 10 that's 1 to 24 6b 24 let's see 6b correct 7. Tian is paid $20.45 per hour as well as a meal allowance of $16.20 per hour. What are Tian's total earnings if she works 9 hours per day for 5 days? Okay, 9 hours per day for 5 days. That's how many hours? 45 hours? And then she's allowed $16.20 per day. That means it's going to be 45 hours times 20.45. And then whatever that is, it's plus $16.20 times 5. Can everybody see that? Yes. Let's get out the calculator. 45 times 20.45 plus 16.20 times 5. $1,001.25. 7C. Let's have a look. Yes. Question 8. Which true bearing is the same as south 48 degrees west? North, south, east, west. South 48 degrees west is there. The true bearing would be yeah, all the way from north to there. So it's 180 degrees plus 48 degrees, which is 228 degrees. 8C. Let's see. Good. That was a quick one. Nine. An object is projected vertically into the air. Its height, h meters, above the ground after t seconds is given that by this parabola. How long is the object at a height of 300 meters or more above the ground? 300 meters is here. And it starts from six seconds all the way to 10 seconds therefore four seconds 9a let's check 9a very good question 10 alex purchased 800 shares total cost was 260 per share all right we have some information here 260 per share for 800 shares uh, let's find out what that is first. Actually, cost. There we go. And then Alex sold the share one year later for 340 each. Okay, sold 340 each and paid a fee. Wait, no, not plus, it'd be minus. $24.95. All right, let's find out. So he paid $2,080 for them. So this is his gross profit. Oh, gross. Yeah, gross income, which means his profit is this minus 2080. $615.05. 10B. Let's look at it. 10B. Yes. Question 11. In 10 years, the future value of an investment will be 150000 The interest rate is 4% per annum compounded half yearly. Which equation will give the present value of the investment? All right, they all look pretty much the same, don't they? 150 is at the top. Now, the only difference is whether it's 0 0.04 or 0 0.02 and whether it's 10 or 20. The interest rate is 4% per year, but it's compounded half yearly. So half of this is 0 0.02. That means these two are out. And then... Uh, how many times is this interest applied in 10 years? 
it will be applied 20 times because it's twice a year for 10 years. Therefore, it's 11D. Let's check 11D. Yes. 12. For a particular course, the recorded data show a relationship between the number of hours of study per week and the marks received out of achieved out of 100. At least squares at least squares regression line is fitted to this data set. The equation of this line is given by that, where m is the predicted mark and h is the number of hours you study. Based on this regression equation, which of the following is correct regarding the predicted mark of a student? It will be 3 for 0 hours of study per week. No, that's not right, because if h is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, it'll be 20 plus 0, then that's not 3. Wrong. It will be 20 for 0 hours, yes. It will increase by 20 for every hour. Incorrect. It'll increase by 3 for every hour. It'll increase by 1 for every 3 additional hours. No. Therefore, 12 is B. There we go. 13. A random variable is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. Alright, the mean is 0. The standard deviation is 1. The table gives the probability that this random variable lies uh, below z for some positive values of what? The table gives the probability that this random variable lies below z for some positive values of z are these. The probability values given in a table are represented in the shaded area in the following diagram. What is the probability that a normally distributed random variable with a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1 lies between 0 and and 1.94, 1.94, the probability of this whole shaded area of the random value being in that shaded area is 0 0.9738. What is the probability that it lies between 0 and 1.94? So where actually I'm going to change color. We're looking for the probability of the random variable being in here. That means we have to minus everything to the left of that mean, which is going to be 50%, which is 0 0.5. So the probability that it will land somewhere in here is going to be 0 0.4738, which is B, 13B. Oop, let's get rid of everything here. 13B, yes. 14, which of the following correctly expresses X as the subject? Let's have a look. Y equals AX minus B all over 2. 2Y equals AX minus B. I'm going to plus b, so 2y plus b equals ax, therefore x is going to be 2y plus b all over a. That one. 14a. Yes. Oh, we're up to the last question. Last question of section 1, 15. The cumulative frequency graph shows the distribution of the number of movie downloads made by 100 people in one month. Which box plot represents the same data displayed in the cumulative frequency graph? All right. The way you read a box plot is this is going to be 25% of the at 25% of the data. This is at 50% and then this is at 75%. And the data given to us conveniently is out of 100, which means at 25 would be this part. At 50, we would get the middle, and then at 75, we should get the high end. Therefore, this 25% mark should be at 3. 
so A and B are out. The middle should be at 6. Yes, this is out. And then the higher part should be at 7. Correct. Therefore, 15 is C. Let's check. Yes, that's right. And that concludes section 1. Let's get into section 2. Section 2, let's go. Question 16, 3 marks. Tom is 25 years old and likes to keep fit by exercising. Use this formula to find his maximum heart rate. Given like this, Tom's maximum heart rate is, well, it will be 220 minus 25. That's 195. Beats per minute. B. Tom will get the most benefit from this exercise if it's between 50 and 85%. What are the two heart rates he should be aiming for? 50% of his heart, of his maximum is going to be 0 0.5 times 195, which is 97.5 beats per minute. 85% of max is going to be 0 0.85 times 195, which is, I've worked it out, 165.75 beats per minute. Therefore, he should be aiming for, or it should be Tom, should be aiming for 97.5 to 165.75 beats per minute. Let's have a look at the answer. 195 beats per minute and then 97.5 and 165. Good. 17. Three marks as well. The numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are written on separate cards. Amy has 1, 3, and 5. Bob has 2, 4, and 6. They play a game in which each person randomly chooses one of their own cards and compares it with the other person's card. The person with the higher card wins. A partially completed tree diagram is shown. Complete it and find the probability that Bob will win. If Amy draws one, Bob can draw two, four, or six. Three, two, four, or six. Two, four, or six. What's the probability that Bob will win? Well, this is all three will win there. Two will win here and in here. So three, six out of nine. Probability of Bob winning is six out of nine, which is two thirds. Suppose Amy and Bob play this game 30 times, how many times would he be expected to win? 20. Because 2 thirds is 20 out of 30. Therefore, we expect Bob to win 30, no, 20, did I say 30 before? It's 20 times. Alright, let's check the answer. Two four six, two four six, two four six. It's two thirds. Okay, and two thirds of thirty, which is twenty times. Question eighteen. Two marks. The marks in a test were normally distributed. The mean mark was sixty. I have to start drawing. Normally distributed. The mean is sixty. The standard deviation is fifteen. What's the percentage of marks higher than 90? That means it's two standard deviations above, because 2 or 15 is 30, that's 16, 90. What's the percentage of marks higher than two standard deviations above? I'll have to look at the cheat sheet, the reference sheet. Where is it? There it is, normal distribution. Um, Let's draw on this one too. We're looking for here and above approximate 95% between here and here is 95%. That means it's 5% of these two. That means it's 2.5% on each side. Therefore, we are expecting 2.5%. 
Let's check the answer. Yeah. Oh, they're using. Yeah. Okay. That's how you get the marks. Find the Z score. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Question 19, three marks. The table shows the types of customer complaints received by an online business in a month. Find the values of A and B. Cumulative frequency would be 98 plus 62 over here. A would be 98 plus 62, which is 160. And then B is what's happening here. One percent, one percent is two frequency of two. And since the damage item has a frequency of eight, that means it's an extra four percent over here. Therefore, it is 96 percent. B, the data from the table are shown in the following Pareto chart. One mark. The manager will address 80% of the complaints. Which types of complaints will the manager address? That's 50%. This is 80%. Therefore, the manager will address the stock shortage and the delivery fee. Let's have a look. Uh, NTA, oh, we should have checked this first. 160 and 96%, I believe that was right. And B is stock shortage and delivery fee, yes. Now we have question 20 with five marks. The table below shows the distances in kilometers between a number of towns. Using the vertices given, draw a weighted network diagram to represent the information shown at the in the table a weighted network diagram. All right. S to go to Y is 280. Y, 280. S going to B is 275. 275. This is kilometers. Uh, then C to Y is 60. C to B is 150. Y to S is 280. Y to C is 60. Y to M is 530. B to S is 275. B to C is 150, B to M is 790. All right, M to Y we've got, M to B we've got. Is that it? Let's see if I'm missing anything. Uh, 28. Nope, that's literally it. Cool. B. A tourist wishes to visit each town. Draw the minimum spanning tree that will allow for this and determine its length. A minimum spanning tree. The, that means the, the shortest amount of length. So the, to do every city could either go there. Let's see. What could the tourist do? Go there 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 oh we can't go from c to m so that's not a thing so it could go to there 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 then there that's one way and then i'm gonna change color or we could go uh there 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 and there that would visit everything all right now we just have to figure out which one is the shortest we start with the blue that's 275. Two eight oh. Therefore blue wins. And I kinda wish I can just get rid of one of the color. Oh, I can. 
this will be the length of the minimum spanning tree would be 1015 kilometers. Let's see if we're right. Yeah, question 21 worth two marks. A real estate agent's commission for selling houses is 2% for the first 800,000 of the sale price and 1.5% for any amount over 800,000. Calculate the commission earned in selling a house for one and a half million dollars. Isn't Sydney house prices ridiculous? I'm glad you agree. Let's go 2% of 800,000 commission. Commission equals, uh, then it'll have to be plus 1.5% of anything over 800,000. 1.5 million minus 800,000. 2% of 800,000? 16,000? 16,000 plus 1.5% oh, of 700,000. One five times seven hundred thousand ten thousand five hundred Therefore the total commission would be twenty six thousand five hundred dollars. Is that the question? Can we calculate the commission earned? Yes. Let's have a look at the answers. Twenty-six thousand five hundred. Uh, Twenty-two with three marks. The formula C equals a hundred N plus B is used to calculate the cost of producing laptops. Where C is the cost, N is the number of laptops, and B is the co fixed cost in dollars. Find the cost when one thousand nine hundred forty-three laptops are produced, and the fixed cost is twenty thousand. $180. Okay, this is straight algebra. Cost 100 times 1943 plus 21480, which is 214480. Let's check that one before we proceed. 214480 dollars. Yes. B. Some laptops have some extra features added, and the formula is now this. Where A is the additional cost per laptop produced. Find the number of laptops produced if the additional cost is $26 per laptop, and the total production cost is that. Again, this is just algebra. Let's have a look. Now it's going to be 97040 equals 100 N plus $26 per laptop plus 2180. 100 N plus 26 N is 126 N. Uh, yeah. Minus 20,180 on both sides, we're going to get 76860. N is going to equal this number divided by 126. 610. That's a nice round number. Therefore, uh, 610 laptops were produced. There you go. Let's see if we're right. 610. Very good. Question 23, four marks. A teacher surveyed the students in her year eight class to investigate the relationship between the average number of hours of phone use per day and number of sleep per day. The results are shown in the scatter plot, number of sleep, hours of sleep, and hours on the phone. The data for two new students uh, are shown in the table, plot their results. This is worth two marks, I guess one for each plot. Let's see. 
Alinta uses the phone four hours per day and she sleeps eight hours a day therefore she's there Birani uses the phone zero hours per day wow and she sleeps ten and a half hours a day she's there that's an easy two marks if there's a question like this get the full two marks B. By first fitting the line of best fit by eye on the scatter plot, estimate the average number of sleep per day for a student who uses an average of two the phone for an average of two hours per day. Let's draw a line of best fit. It'll roughly be use a ruler for this, obviously. It'll roughly be about that. Oh how convenient is this? Two hours is pretty much at nine hours of sleep. Therefore, it'll be roughly around nine hours of sleep. To get two marks, I'm guessing the drawing a line would be one mark and reading the nine hours would be another mark. But let's check question 23. Uh, yep, the, the two marks are there and there. And then B, uh, nine hours of sleep. Okay, question 24, four marks. A student believes that the time it takes for an ice cube to melt in minutes varies inversely with the room temperature. The student observes that at a room temperature of 15 degrees Celsius, it takes 12 minutes for the ice cube to melt. Find the equation relating M and T. Let's see, the uh, time it takes for a cube to melt M in minutes is inversely, uh, varies inversely with the temperature and it takes 12, no, there's a K, there's a constant up there and when T is 15 m equals 12. Then we can figure out 12 equals k on whoops 15. Therefore k is what's 15 times 12? It is 180. Therefore the equation is going to be m equals 180 on t. Let's check that first. 24a. M equals 180 on T. Very good. Now B. By first completing the table of values, graph the relationship between temperature and time. When T is 5, M is 180 divided by 5, 36. When T is 15, it'll be 180 divided oh, 180 divided by 15 is 12 and when t is 30 it'll be 180 divided by 30 which is 6. Oh I should know that. Now we just plot it. When the temperature is 5 it takes 36 minutes over here to melt when temperature is 15 it takes 12 minutes and when it's 30 degrees it takes 2 minutes. Right, we have to graph this. Obviously this is not looking like it's going to be a straight line. If you're still not sure whether this is a straight line or not, just plot a few more points, you know, just extend this table out, grab a few more points, maybe grab when t is 10, maybe grab when t is 40 and see what the graph looks like but I think it's a I think it's an exponential curve like oops like this like that let's see if it's right we're up to 24b 
Aha, there we go. Exponential curve. Did we miss anything? I think those are the points we put down. Excellent. Let's move on. Question 25. Four marks. The table shows the future value of an annuity of one dollar. Future values of dollars. Years four, five, six. Okay. Zell is saving for a trip and estimates he'll need fifteen thousand dollars. He opens an account earning three percent per annum compounded annually. How much does Zell need to deposit every year if he wishes to have enough money for his trip in four years' time? Four years time, three percent, okay, per annum annuity of a dollar, if he puts in one dollar every year for four years, he's going to get four dollars and eighteen cents. How much is he going to need to get fifteen thousand dollars? If uh, so, x, how much is he going to need to put in times 4.184 to get 150? Oh no, $15,000. Therefore, x is just going to be 15,000 divided by 4.184. dot 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 which is $3,585.09 every year for four years get 3% interest. I'm pretty sure that's right. Let's have a look. 3585.09, correct. How much interest will Zal have earned on this investment? Give your answer to the nearest dollar. Zal's contribution. How much did he actually put in? It's 3585.09 times 4, right? Which is he put in himself $14,340.34. Therefore, the interest that he earned, interest earned, is going to be 15,000 minus 14,340 is equal to minus the answer. He's earned $659.6558 dot 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 to the nearest dollar is $660. Let's see if that's right. $660 to the nearest dollar. Question 26, 4 marks. The diagram shows two right angle triangles, ABC and ABD, where AC blah 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 blah. Calculate the size of theta to the nearest minute. Hmm. I want to find this side because if I have this side, which I can get from this angle and this side, I can get that one. Then I'll have from theta, that's the opposite, and that's the hypotenuse. So I want this one, AB. From 41 degrees point of view, that's the opposite, and this is the adjacent. adjacent. Therefore, tan 41 degrees, oops, not percent. 1041 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. X is going to become 35, 10, 41 degrees, which is, I'm not going to work it out because I'm just going to keep it like that. Therefore, sine theta is going to become, it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is 35, 10, 41 degrees over 93 and theta is going to be the inverse sine of 35 10 41 degrees over 93 degree uh, 93 and then we just put that in the calculator
19 degrees, 5 minutes, 45.38 seconds. And what did it want to the nearest minute, which will be 19 degrees. Therefore, theta is 19 degrees. Let's check. Oh, to the nearest minute. Oh, shoot. Did I read the question wrong? Oh my gosh, I did. I did read the question wrong. To the nearest minute. Yes, six minutes. 19 degrees and six minutes. Boy, what a silly place to lose a mark. I even read to the nearest minute and I still did it wrong. Anyway, question 27. Four marks. A company purchases a machine for $50,000. The two methods of depreciation being considered are the declining balance method or the straight line balance method. For the declining balance method, the salvage value after n years is this, where s is the salvage value and v0 is the initial value. What is the annual rate of depreciation used in this formula? Well, if you see here, it is worth 80% of its value every single year. Therefore, it depreciates by 20%. So it's worth one mark. I guess I'll just do any old type of working out. Depreciation, depreciation equals. And then calculate the salvage value after three years. Salvage value equals the initial value is 50,000 times 0.8 cubed to the power of 3. 25,600 dollars. After three years, it's worth this much. Let's check it before we go on to the next part. Rate of depreciation is 20% and 25,600. Very good. Now B. For the straight line method, the value of the machine is depreci depreciated at a rate of 12.2% of the purchase price each year. When will the value of the machine using this method be equal to the salvage value of part 1, part A? So it starts at, I'm going to do the working out somewhere over here because I don't have space at the bottom. It starts out at $50,000. It's a straight line method. That means it's going to minus, it's going to go down the same amount every year. And that amount is 12.2% of $50,000, which is, um, what should I write here? Rate of decline, rate of decline equals so it's going to go down $6,100 every year. And it's asking us, when will the machine, so how many years will it take for it to come down to this amount? That means $50,000 minus 6,100 times N is equal to 25,600. Then that will become 50,000 minus 25,600 equals 6100N. I hope you can see that. N would be 24,400 over 6100. It's going to take four years to be the same. Let's look at the answers. Four years. 28. Four marks. A dam is in the shape of a triangular prism, which is 50 meters long as shown. Both ends, A, B, C, D, E, F, are isosceles triangles with equal lengths of 25 meters. The included angles, B, A, C, and E, D, F, are 150 degrees. Calculate the number of liters of water this dam will hold when full. To calculate the volume of this dam, we just need the area of the triangle and then we times it by 50. To have the area of the triangle, area is half AB sine 
the included angle, which is conveniently given. Therefore, it's half times 25. The, so this is A, this is B, and this angle C has to be the included angle between those two sides. And as I said, they've given it to us. So that's good. So A, B times sine 150 degrees. The area is 156.25 meters squared. The volume is going to be 156.25 times 50 meters. Everything is in meters. Good. And that is 7,812 and a half liters. No. Meters cubed. Uh, what's that in liters? One cubic meter. Hmm. Hang on. One cubic centimeter is one milliliter. And one cubic meter is the same as one million cubic centimeters. Therefore, it's one million milliliters which is a thousand liters. So one cubic meter can hold a thousand liters. Seven, almost 8,000 of these cubic meters. That means we just times a thousand, which is seven, eight, one, two, five, oh, oh, liters. Seven million, almost eight million liters. Let's have a look at the answer. Where are we up to? Question 28. Seven, almost eight million liters. Very good. Question 29 worth three marks. Sydney is 10 hours ahead of the coordinated universal time, UTC plus 10, and New York is five hours behind. Tony travels from Sydney to New York. His plane leaves Sydney at 8.20 p.m. on Wednesday and flies non-stop to New York. The flight takes 20 hours and 24 minutes. What time and day in New York did the plane, lane, plane lands? All right, let's do some drawing. So we have Sydney to New York and left Sydney at 8.20 p.m. Wednesday. And the flight took 20 hours and 24 minutes. Uh, this is a plus 10. This is a minus 5. That means there's a there to there, there's a 15 hours time difference. That makes sense? Which means if it's 8.20 p.m. on Wednesday in Sydney, it's going to be 15 hours in the past. I know, it's, it's weird. It's going to be 15 hours before for New York. That means when the plane left Sydney, it's what time is it in New York? It's 8.20 p.m. Wednesday minus 15 hours, which is what? Minus 12 hours would be 8.20 a.m. on Wednesday minus another 3 hours would be 5.20 a.m. on Wednesday in New York. So the when the plane left Sydney, it was it's 5.20 a.m. on Wednesday in New York. And it's going to take 20 hours and 24 minutes before the plane lands. 
that means the plane lands at 5.20 a.m. Wednesday plus 20 hours and 24 minutes. What's that going to be? Plus 12 hours is... Hang on, I, I got to do this. Plus 12 hours is going to be 5.20 p.m. on Wednesday. Plus... Eight hours, what's that gonna be? Five plus eight, 13. So 1 20 a.m. on Thursday. So that's the 20 hours. Then plus 24 minutes, that's gonna be 1 44 a.m. on Thursday. 1 44 a.m. Thursday in New York this is New York time let's see if I'm right 29 1.44 a.m. Thursday in New York excellent question 30 4 marks Ellie is choosing between two investment options Investment one, invest option one, option two, pay 40,000 today at 1.2% per annum compounded monthly or $1,000 at the end of each quarter at 2.4% per annum compounded quarterly. A future table of annuity of $1 is shown. What is the value of the investment after 10 years of option one? Okay, option one, it's compounded monthly, which means the interest rate is 1.2% divided by 12, so that's 0.1%, 0 0.001 per month. Uh, let's look at the reference sheet. We want this one here. That's going to be 40,000 times 1.001 1 .001 to the power of how many compounded monthly? How long for? 10 years. Uh, 10 years compounded monthly, so that's 120. To the power of 120 equals. Who is this? Ellie. Ellie is going to have $45,097.17 after 10 years. What is the difference between the future values of 10 years using option 1 and option 2? Well, we got to find how much she would get with option 2 first. Ellie, in option 2 is $1,000 at the end of each quarter, earning 2.4% per annum compounded quarterly. That means the interest is going to be 2.4% divided by 4, which is what, 0.6%? Which is 0 0.006. We're interested in that one. Quarterly for 10 years is going to be 40, right? Four times each year. Oh, four times each year for 10 years. 40 times that interest is going to get applied and that is that's the factor we're looking for so option two uh, is going to get us a thousand dollars times 45.0563 that's going to be four five zero five six point $30. Right. The difference between the two is going to be the difference. Just taking the difference. 45,097.17 minus 45056.3. There's a difference of $40.87. 
Let's check the answers. Question 30. Uh, we're up to from table. Yes, it's that one. Did they skip 30A? They did, didn't they? 30A is 4509717. And the difference is $40.87. Ooh, this one's worth five marks. Oh, the other four marks are on the next page. All right. A wildlife park has five main attractions, A, B, C, D, E, connected by directional paths. A simple network is drawn to represent the flow. Numbers at any one time. What is the flow capacity of the cut shown? The capacity, there's, can do 10 there, 20 there. Ooh, 10, but it's in the opposite direction, so that doesn't count and then 10 there. The flow capacity of the cut shown would be flow capacity equals 10 plus 20 plus 10, which is 40, 40 people. This is a bit, this, this will trick a lot of people. Be sure to look at the direction. Let's have a look. 31A capacity cut is 40, yes. B. By showing a suitable cut on the diagram below, explain why the network's current maximum flow is less than 40 visitors. Uh, maximum, maximum flow. Uh, so if I cut there, that's 40. That one was cut before. If I cut here, that's 15, 25, 35. That's less than 40. If I cut. Cut. Equals 15 plus 10 plus 10. That's 35, which is less than 40. Yeah. One path is to be increased in capacity so that the overall maximum flow will be 40 at any one time. Which path could be increased and by how much? Uh, plenty. There are plenty of things we could do. We could increase this one by 5. We could increase that one by 5. Or we could increase that one by 5. Either way, we just have to increase one of them by 5. Let's see what they say. Yep, that's the cut. For the maximum to be 40, there must be a minimum cut of 40. Since there's a cut of 35, then the maximum flow must be less than 40. Path C to B can be increased by 5, yes. The path A to E, where's A? A to E, yes, increased by 5. Or D to E, D to E, increased by 5. Yep. All of those can be done. By the way, if I was doing this in a in the HSE, I would not be doing it in order because by the time I've come to these type of questions, my brain is turning to mush and I won't be able to think clearly. In fact, I would probably do the whole exam back to front. I would have started from the very hard questions and move my way down to the easy ones because after a few hours of doing this, it becomes harder and harder to think. All right, but I'm going to keep going for you. Question 32, four marks. The diagram shows a part consisting of a rectangle and a semicircle. The semicircle has a radius of 100 meters. The dimensions of the rectangle are 200 by 250 meters. A lake occupies the section in the park as shown. The rest of the park is a grass section with measure and the end of grass. Blah, 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 blah. A. Using two applications of trapezoidal rule, calculate the approximate area of the grass section. Trapezoidal rule is an area which is half of the height a out of a plus b. This is the area of a trapezium. I'll call that A1 because we need to use it two times. 
I'm going to do this trapezium first, which is the height is 100 meters, so 100 on 2, and that's 160 and that's 150. 160 plus 150, that's going to be what? meters squared. Then A2 similarly is going to be 50 outside of 150 and 250. And that is 4 grass area is 15,500 plus 20,000, which is 35,500 meters squared. Hence, calculate the approximate area of the lake to the nearest square meter. The lake. I need the semicircle plus this area here. Let's do the semicircle first. Area of semicircle is pi r squared, half of pi r squared. Pi times the radius which is 100 squared, half it, 10,000, half of 10,000 is 5,000, so it's going to be 5,000 pi meters squared, and I'll leave it at that for now. Area of the other section of the lake is going to be the rectangle minus the grass area. Rectangle is 250 times 200 minus 35500. 14,500 meters squared. Therefore, area of the lake is the two of them combined, 5,000 pi plus 14,500, 30,207.96327 dot 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 uh, to the nearest square meter, so that is 30208 square meters. Let's check answers. 35,500 square meters, yes. Thirty thousand two hundred eight square meters. Question 33 with 5 marks. The diagram shows an aeroplane that was flying towards an airport at A on a bearing of 135 degrees true. When it was at point O, what? When it was at point O, 20 kilometers away from the airport A, the flight... Hang on, let me read that again. The diagram shows an aeroplane that was flying towards... Oh, I see. So when the plane is here, the trajectory changed. Um, the aeroplane landed on airport B, directly south of O. The distance of O to B is 50 kilometers. Show that the distance between airport A and B is 38.5 kilometers correct to one decimal place. A, B. Well, first of all, if that's 135 degrees, then this angle must be at 180 minus 35, so 45 degrees. And to find this side, we'll use the cosine rule, which is A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, angle a. Yes. a is what, this side is what we're looking for and this is side a and angle a is the one opposite it, so that's right. b and c are both 20 and 50, whichever way around, it doesn't really matter. 20 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 20 times 50 times cos 45 degrees. 
1485.786 dot 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 a is going to be the square root of this square root answer and we have 38.5459 dot 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 therefore it's 38.5 to one decimal place right now that we have that what do they want us to do next use the sine rule to find angle OBA this angle here to the nearest degree the sine rule is sine I'm gonna call this theta sine theta over the side opposite it which is 20 is equal to sine 45 degrees over the length that's opposite that one which is 38.5 sine theta is going to equal 20 sine 45 degrees on 38.5 theta is going to be the inverse sine of that whole thing which is what Twenty one degrees thirty three minutes three point three six seconds to the nearest degree is twenty two degrees. And lastly, what is the bearing of the airport at B from the airport at A? What it's asking for is from A, if that was another north over here the bearing from A to B. So it was wanting that angle. What is it? Well, we just found that this angle is 22 degrees down here. That means if I extend this AB line, uh, it's not very accurate. Let me try again. Okay. If I extended this line further, that means this angle in here is also going to be 22 degrees due to it being corresponding angles because the northern lines are parallel lines so their corresponding angles that's going to be at 22 degrees the rest of this is going to be 180 degrees therefore the bearing from B oh no 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 from A to B is going to be 180 plus 22 which is 202 degrees true or it is south 22 degrees west but which is it though what is the bearing it doesn't say either one of these you can it is true oh my gosh oh okay let's see there 38.5. Oh, yeah, that's just. We know that that's right. Maybe it's 22 degrees. Yes, got the 22 degrees. And then C is 202 degrees. Correct. There should be a capital T there. Question 34 four marks. A composite solid is drawn. The top section is a cylinder with a height of 3 centimeters. Diameter of four centimeters. The bottom section is a hemisphere with a diameter of six centimeters. Uh, da, 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 da. Find the total surface area of the composite in square centimeters to one decimal place. I feel like doing this one first. The area of the circle. Area of a circle, I'll call it A1, pi r squared, which is pi times two squared, that means 4 pi square centimeters. Got that one. What do I want to do next? I may as well do this next. And that is a rectangle. So A2. The rectangle is 3 by 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circle. That means it's 3 times 2 pi times 2, 
that's 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, that's 12 pi square centimeters. Got that. Next. Uh, I don't feel like doing that yet. I'll do the hemisphere part. I'll call that A3. A whole sphere would have a surface area of 4 pi r squared. Since it's halved, it's 2 pi r squared, which is 2 pi, what's the radius? 3 squared. That's 9 times 2 is 18 pi square centimeters. And then lastly, it's this ring shape here, which is a big circle minus a small circle. The big circle would be 9 pi. The small circle is 4 pi and we get 5 pi square centimeters. Total area, so surface area will equal 4 pi plus 12 pi plus 18 pi plus 5 pi. What is that? That's 30, 39 pi centimeters squared. They want it to the one decimal place. 122.52211 dot 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 one decimal place is 122.5 centimeters squared let's check the answer yep there it is it's hard to see but there it is 122.5 centimeters squared we're up to question 35 four marks Joe is researching the relationship between the ages of teenage characters in television series and the age of actors playing these characters. <coughs> After collecting the data, Joe finds that the correlation coefficient is 0.4564. A scatter plot is drawn with the uh, best line of best fit equation being this. Describe and interpret the data and other information provided with reference to the context given. The correlation coefficient of 0.4564 is mediocre at best. It's not a very strong coefficient. I would say it's medium coefficient. It seems the youngest character in movies depicted is 14 years of age. And the actors playing those 14 year olds starts at 14 and then you can get up to a 23 year old playing the 14 year old. So, but no one younger than 14 is playing the 14 year old. Whereas the 15 year old, you can get a 14 year old to play the 15 year old. And it could get up to, I think that's the biggest span of age for a 15 year old, because uh, that's a pretty short one. I think this one is still longer, just from here to there, is still longer than this one. So a broader amount of ages can play a 15 year old, spanning from 14 to 27, playing a 15 year old. A 16 year old. This is 16 here. No 16 year olds are actually playing 16 year olds, funny enough. Uh, it starts from 20. So 16 year olds are only played by people who are 20 years or older, which is weird. And 17 year olds are kind of the same. It's only being played by people who are older than 17 all the way up to 30 year olds playing 17 year olds. 16 year olds have the most narrow range of ages playing them, whereas 15 year olds have the biggest amount of range playing them. Uh, what else can we say about this? As the ages get older, then uh, the actors, the age of actors also get older because this line is sloping up. Let's see what they say. Question 35. See, the relationship is positive, it's increasing, is weak to moderate, yep. As age character as character age increases by one year, 
the actor's age increases by almost two years, right? Mm. The actors playing teenagers do not need to be teenagers. Yes, the range is from 14 to 17 playing... Oh, right, the characters' age are ranging from 14 to 17, but the actors' age are ranging from 14 to 30. That means there's no need for just young actors, but older people can play them as well. There are few characters of age 14. There are Yep, characters of age 15 have the largest, widest group from 14 to 27. Characters older than 15 are all played by older actors. Yes, we did see that. The youngest actors are going close to the age, but they're all older. Alrighty, that was a lot of talking. Let's move on. Question 37 for 5 marks. Frankie borrows $200,000 from the bank. The loan is to be repaid over 23 years at a rate of 7.2% per annum compounded monthly. The repayments have been set at $1,485 per month. The interest charge and the rate bonus blah, 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 is here. What are the values of A and B? Okay, month one, the loan starts at $200,000. They charged an interest of $1,200. He then repaid it this much, and this is what the balance is after that one month. How much is the interest charged? It's going to be uh, not 7.2% of this, but 7.2% divided by 12, which is 6. 6.6% per month of interest R equals what is 0.6% of 199715 so the interest here would be 1198.29 oh I should do working out here A is going to equal 0 0.006 times 199715 that's one one nine eight point two nine dollars and then of course Frankie repays the usual amount now it's this much and then carries over this is now the interest repays it how much is it left that's easy it's just going to be one nine nine four two eight point two nine plus 1196.57 minus 1485. One nine nine one three nine point eight six dollars Let's see, it's less than that amount, which is good. Next one. After 50 months of repaying, repaying the loan, Frankie decides to make a lump sum payment of $40,000 and to continue making the monthly repayments uh, of $1,485. The loan will then be fully repaid after a further 146 monthly repayments. How much less will Frankie pay overall by making the lump sum payment? Let me think on this for a minute. I think I've got this. Let's pretend he never put in the lump sum of the $40,000 without lump sum equals he's paying 1485 every single month for 23 years. That's 23 times 12. How much is that total? He's paying four zero nine eight six zero dollars. It's nine. Now that he's paying the lump sum in the middle with lump sum. What's he saying? After fifty months, so he's paid one four eight five for fifty months. He then put in. $40,000 
and then continue for a further 146 months. So actually I should have put in 196 here. Oops, plus an extra 40,000. He's only paid 331060 with the lump sum. How much less is he paying? So the difference, uh, difference equals 409860 minus 331060. He's paying $78,800 less. Then of course you would write a sentence at the end saying, therefore Frankie will pay $78,800 less overall. Let's check the answer. To 36 a eh? I'm pretty sure those were it I didn't check them you guys can vouch for me let's go through here uh, let me see now 409 860 78,000 yeah Frankie saved 78,800 dollars question 37 second last question we can do this Three marks. The lifespan of batteries from a particular factory is normally distributed with a mean of 840 hours. Let me draw a thing here. Mean of 840 hours and a standard deviation of 80 hours. Mm -hmm. It is known from statistical tables that for this distribution, approximately 60% of the batteries have a lifespan of less than 860 hours. 60%. What is the approximate percentage of batteries with a lifespan between 820 and 920? I have to get my head around this for a minute. Mm. So if it's 80... That would be 920 over here, and over there would be 80 less, which is 760. There? Is that right? Yep. It is known approximately 60% have less than 860. Well, it's 50% from there to there, and then plus another 10%, and this is 860. What is the approximate percentage of batteries with a lifespan between 820? 820 is here which is 10% this way, 10% to the left, because 10% to the right is 860, which is 20 more than 840. So 20 less than 840 at 820 is 10% this way. What is the approximate percentage better? 820 and 920? So we're looking for this percentage here. Between negative 1 and 1 is 68%, which means from 0 to 1 is 34%, plus we want that extra 10% from there to there, therefore it's 44% from 840 hours to 920 hours is 34 uh, okay let's do it let's be a little extra 68 divided by 2 which is 34 uh, percent hopefully that gives us one mark and then 8 uh, uh, how do we put this 840 to 860 is 10%, therefore 820 to 840 is also 
ten percent. Therefore, eight twenty to nine twenty would be thirty four plus ten, which is forty four percent. Hopefully, that's enough for three marks. Let's see how they write it. Thirty seven. 60% have a lifespan less than 860. 10% between 840 and 860, therefore 10% will have 820 to 840. 68% between 760 and 920, therefore 34% will be between 840 and 920, therefore it's 44%. There you go. With three marks, a full container has 4.8 liters of a mixture of cordial and water They're in the ratio of one to three. Let's start with, it was originally 4.8 liters. However, 1.2 liters were taken out. Uh, volume, I'll just say. Volume equals. Therefore, what's left behind is 3.6 liters. In that 3.6 liters, it is still one part cordial to three parts water. That means one part is going to be 3.6 divided by 4, which is 0 0.9 liters. That means there is 0 0.9 liters of cordial and 2.7 or 0 0.9 times 3 2.7 liters of water in that mixture however they then add 1.2 liters of water into it which means there's going to be 0 0.9 liters of cordial to 3.9 liters of water. Now we have a new ratio. 0.9 to 3.9. 0 0.9 to 3.9. But we rarely leave ratios with decimal points, so I'm just going to use my calculator real quick. If I just do 0.9 over 3.9, gives me 3 to 13. Therefore, the new ratio is 3 to 13 of cordial to water. Let's see if this is right. 3 to 13 cordial to water. There you go. There you have it. We finished it. Thank goodness. If you have any questions, if you want more details on how I did something, or if you just want more in-depth information, leave your questions in the comments below and I will make separate videos describing it in more detail. Do well in your HSC, let me know how you go. Until then, study smart, not hard.